One of the basic essentials of camping and backpacking is your shelter. Most people sleep in tents and some people sleep in hammocks. I prefer to sleep in a hammock when it's feasible. If you are considering buying and sleeping in a hammock, there are potentially some things that you may not have thought about that you should consider. When you are thinking about getting a hammock, there are many things that you should consider. Here are six reasons why you may not want to buy a hammock. Yeah. The most obvious is you could potentially not have any trees to hang from. If you are hiking in the mountains and may camp over tree line or in other areas like the desert, a tent may be better. Not only are there trees, but are the trees big enough and strong enough to hold a hammock? Are those trees going to be the 15 to 20 feet apart necessary for hanging a hammock? And is there going to be an open space between those trees where you can put your hammock? In many thicker forests, there's a lot of underbrush and branches that you may have to clear out. When you're sleeping in a hammock, not only do you have the hammock, but you have the hammock, the suspension for the hammock, a tarp or a rain fly, a top quilt or sleeping bag, and an under quilt or a sleeping pad. Most hammockers buy an under quilt. You can sleep in a hammock with a sleeping pad. However, it is very difficult because when you're getting in and out of your hammock and when you're moving around, that pad can shift around and not only is it difficult, but it can be uncomfortable and if it's not in the right spot, you can get cold. Now an under quilt is a second quilt that is hung from its own suspension actually underneath your hammock on the outside. And by having that on the outside, it keeps that insulation underneath you from being compressed. If you try to sleep in a sleeping bag inside of a hammock without a sleeping pad, your bottom side will get cold because that insulation inside of the sleeping bag is being compressed between your hammock and your bottom. So I always tell people if you are sleeping in a hammock, you need to plan on it feeling on your bottom side 20 degrees colder than it actually is outside. So you're gonna need some sort of good insulation on the bottom unless it's really warm outside. Yes, you can find some ultra lightweight hammocks and tarps. However, most of those ultra lightweight hammocks have some weight restrictions. So if you're a heavier person, it may not work for you. You will need to carry that second quilt. There's no getting beyond that. So that's gonna add to the bulk and the weight and typically your tent, your one quilt, and your sleeping pad is gonna be smaller and way less than the hammock setup. Yeah. Sleeping overnight, possibly multiple nights in a hammock is way different than taking a nap in an afternoon or relaxing out in your hammock. Those cheap gathered in Chinese hammocks or popular hammocks like Eno are not made for camping and sleeping in overnight for multiple nights. Good camping hammocks aren't available in the big box retailers like REI and Dick's Sporting Goods. Your best option is to check out some of the smaller cottage vendors that are available on the internet. I will have links to many of those in my description below. A couple of the biggest differences between an afternoon hammock and a camping hammock is camping hammocks have what's called an offset design. So on the head side of your hammock, there will be extra fabric on one side and down on the foot side, on the opposite side, there will be extra fabric there as well. And what this does is it allows you to lay at a diagonal which allows you to lay flatter and hopefully more comfortable. Good camping hammocks also typically have an integrated bug net with a zipper on it 
to keep the bugs off of you while you're sleeping. Now, if you're gonna be sleeping in a gathered end hammock, know that they're typically made for sleeping on your back. It can be difficult to sleep on your side and sleeping on your stomach is impossible. I sleep in a Warbonnet Ridge Runner bridge hammock. A bridge hammock has spreader bars that go across the head and foot end and provides for a flatter lay, which allows easier side sleeping. Be prepared for a long learning curve when you are learning how to set up and sleep in your hammock. You'll need to figure out how tight to hang your hammock, how much higher the foot end should be than the head end, how tight the separate suspension for your under quilt should be, and many other factors. And once you think that you finally have it figured out with those trees in the backyard, you go out camping and the trees are farther apart and all of those things that you thought you knew how to do are out the window and you have to figure it out in a new spot. If hung improperly, things like calf ridge and cold butt syndrome may keep you from being comfortable. Hammocks have a big fiddle factor. A lot of people like fiddling with this, fiddling with that, and just know that you're gonna to have to make a lot of little adjustments to be comfortable. And if you're like me and a perfectionist, that can drive you crazy. I like my bridge hammock not only for the side sleeping, but I think it's easier to hang. The under quilt hooks directly onto the hammock opposed to having a separate suspension. Now some hammocks, like the ones from Superior Hammock, have an integrated under quilt that make hanging much easier. There are lots of YouTubers out there about hammock camping. My good friend Shug is the OG of hammock YouTubers. All right, all secure in Sector 7, woo buddy! There's an online forum called Hammock Forums that's great, but there's so much information and so many opinions that honestly, it is overwhelming for a new hammocker. Some companies like Hammock Gear have a package where everything is sold together, which seems to make things easier. The package comes with a hammock, a tarp, stakes, stuff sacks, a top quilt, and an under quilt for just under $600. While most hammockers have a good organization system with different pockets and pouches to hang things from and to store things from in their hammock, a hammock does not have the area like a tent to lay the small gear out. Most of the time, backpackers who sleep in a hammock store their backpack on the ground on a ground sheet under their hammock or hang it on a tree. Yeah. I know that there are some very expensive tents, sleeping pads, sleeping bags. However, if you're just starting out, I think that you can find some inexpensive quality gear that I'd recommend. When it comes to hammock camping, I wouldn't recommend buying the inexpensive cheap gear because the quality and the comfort isn't what you're gonna like. And to be honest, when it comes to hammocking, the hammock doesn't cost that much. It's the tarp, the second quilt, that's when it starts to get spendy. That second quilt, the under quilt, depending on the temperature rating, is probably gonna cost you $250 and up. Like I said earlier, you can sleep in a hammock with a sleeping bag and a sleeping pad. However, it's awkward, and you're not going to like it. In my Warbonnet Bridge Hammock, there is an option for what's called a double layer hammock where there's a second pocket where you can slide a sleeping pad in so it isn't shifting around inside of your hammock. Yeah! I camp so frequently in my hammock that I really have the tear down and the setup nailed down and can do it very quickly. However, there are still many more components than when you are sleeping in a tent. I don't sleep in a tent that often and I'm a little awkward in setting it up and tearing it down, but I can still do it quicker than my hammock setup. Because in a tent, really all you have is to pack away your sleeping bag, pack away your pad, roll up your tent and hit the trail. Now, setting up and tearing down may not be important for some, 
but if you're looking to hit the trail quickly in the morning, it comes in handy. Yeah. Hammocks are not a multi-person affair. So if you're looking for the security or the romance of sleeping next to someone in a tent, a hammock isn't for you. Romance? If you are camping with multiple people, if you're sleeping in a tent, you can share the cost and the weight of carrying that gear amongst the people. If you are sleeping in hammocks, everybody has their own set of gear and that cost and that weight can't be shared. So I've given you these six items of why you may not want to sleep in a hammock, but yet I love my hammock and I advocate for a hammock. So here are the main four reasons of why I think that you should try a hammock. Green light, let's get it. Green light, let's get it. Most backpackers will tell you to invest in sleep. Even if that costs you more or it weighs more, do it. Because your shoulders may be sore and your pocketbook may be empty, but if you are not sleeping on a backpacking trip, it will be miserable and you will wish that you had done things differently. I personally have a hard time falling asleep sometimes where I'm laying on my side or shifting around. Women, because of their larger hips and older people like me, have a hard time sleeping on the ground with not enough padding. Sleeping in a hammock can relieve those pressure points. Now, a hammock weighs more than sleeping in a tent and a bridge hammock like I have weighs even more than sleeping in a normal hammock. But that extra weight, that extra cost, and that extra fiddle factor is well worth it for having a place that I look forward to getting to and sleeping in at night. Green light, let's get it. Green light, let's get it. Many people think that you are more exposed to the elements when you are sleeping under a tarp with no sides in a hammock. However, with some experience and some adjustments, you can stay dry better in a hammock and a tarp than in a tent. Some tarps are bigger and have doors for 100% coverage and privacy. Even with the smaller tarps, you can lower and adjust it to stay dry. Another big advantage of sleeping in a hammock under a tarp is you have much better ventilation, which greatly reduces the amount of condensation. While a decent tent will protect you from exterior precipitation, even the most expensive tents will have a problem with getting wet inside due to condensation. This condensation can come from your breath even when it isn't raining and it isn't moist outside. The best way to ventilate a tent is to keep the doors open to reduce that condensation. However, if the weather doesn't participate, you're not going to be able to keep those doors open. Now, when you're sleeping in a hammock with a rain fly, there's usually a gap between your rain fly and the ground that provides ventilation even when it is raining outside. When you arrive at camp and it's raining out, or when you leave camp and it's raining, it's almost impossible to tear down your tent without the inside of your tent from getting wet. Now, when you sleep in a hammock under a tarp, when you arrive at camp and it's raining, you put up the tarp first and then you get out your hammock and your gear underneath the protection of that tarp. Now, when you're leaving and have to tear down in the rain, you can do all of that in reverse where you pack up your gear, you pack up your hammock, and then maybe you have some breakfast under that tarp and then you take down the tarp and you hit the trail. Finding a good flat tent pad can sometimes be difficult. When you are sleeping in a hammock, as long as there's trees, you can sleep on a hill, you can sleep over rocks, you can sleep over logs, you can sleep over roots. You can camp many places that a tent camper could not set up. Green light, let's get it. Green light, let's get it. All right, I'm going to whine here a little bit. I'm not a huge fan of crawling on the ground, unzipping that tent, getting in the tent, 
trying not to get my knees wet and dirty and getting that dirt in the tent, flipping around on my backside, sitting on the ground, taking off my shoes, zipping up the tent, getting into my sleeping bag, hoping I don't pop that, uh, that pad, and finally falling asleep. All comfortable sleeping, but whammo, two hours later, I got to pee. It, of course, it's probably raining outside. I got to dig out my raincoat. I got to unzip the tent. I got to put on my shoes. I got to kind of kneel and get up from my tent, not hitting the vestibule. Go on and do my business, getting all wet. Come back inside, kneel on the ground, trying not to get muddy and dirty and getting that in the tent. Sitting on my butt, taking off my shoes, zipping up, getting back in the sleeping bag. Wine session over. Hammock isn't quite the ordeal. The hammock is set up a couple feet off the ground. I unzip the hammock. I go sit in my hammock from the sitting position, never on the ground. I take off my shoes. I set them next to my hammock on a ground sheet underneath the tarp. Whip my legs in, zip up. I am sleeping like that. Of course, I still have to pee. So a few hours later, when I have to pee, it isn't quite as uh, an ordeal and I am I'm not as traumatized because I know, okay, I just unzip. I whip my legs back out. I can stand on the ground without putting my shoes on, without ever getting on the ground, underneath my rain fly. And I paid attention when I set up my hammock. So I know which way is downhill. I can whip it out right there and pee on the ground without getting outside and going out into the elements, finish it, put it back in, get back in my hammock, whip the legs over, zip it back up, and I'm back out sleeping like that. Okay, enough of that. I know a lot of you gear geeks may want to argue with me on some points of this video where, oh, you know, I have a, I have a hammock that only weighs one ounce and uh, it's way lighter than a tent. I know there's some exceptions to the rule, but generally hammock camping is more expensive and weighs more than sleeping in a tent. So if you have some constructive ideas of things that I should have talked about in this video that other people may want to know, or you have any questions about sleeping in a tent or a hammock that maybe I can answer, comment down below and I will try to help you out. So if you like this video, I have lots of videos where I'm actually out camping and hammocking or tenting and hiking. And it's not just me here talking about gear. Do me a favor, hit subscribe, punch the bell notification, and you can see those videos as they come out. Also do me a favor and check out Midwest Backpacker on Instagram and on Facebook. And hey, I hope that you get out there whichever way you want to camp, do it your own way, hike your own hike. But I hope that you aren't sleep deprived and when I see you out on the trail, you will be well rested.